bless the name of the Lord in this house on this morning. For this is the day that the Lord, come on somebody, the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. You got problems just like I got problems, but this is the Lord's day. This is the Lord's time. So forget about yourself and what you're going through for a minute and recognize that God is worthy of the praise. And that is why we're here on this morning, to lift up the name of the Lord. Has God been good to any of y'all this morning? No, that was half of y'all. Has any of that God been good to any of y'all on this morning? Y'all, anybody knowing to be a rock in a weary land, shelter in the time of storm, bridge over Troy? God is just good. The Campbell Soup, somebody say he's un uh -uh good. Somebody say, look, he's a good God. He's a wonderful Savior. If you ain't never tried him, I want to let you know, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good, and he'll make a difference in your life. Amen. So good to see so many of you that are here on this morning. Um, and we thank God for your being here. We thank God for those of you that are watching us via live stream. And we wish you was here because you're watching online, but ain't nothing like being here in person. Ain't nothing like being here because I know y'all can't see him, but I want to let y'all know the Lord is in this building on this morning. He said that where the spirit of the Lord is, church, there's liberty to set you free. And I know there may be many of you that have came in here this morning, bowed down and weighed down with many things that are going on in your life. But Jesus is here, and you can get what you need on this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God again for your being here. And we reverence God, and we bless his name, for we realize we would not be where we are had it not been for the goodness of God. Did nobody tell you you was going to live to see February 2022? It was the goodness of God. Ten years ago, you, you ain't know nothing about no 2022, but look at God, how God has blessed you and brought you thus far in your life. And you, your own self, have your own testimonies. A preacher two, three years ago, I thought that was it. I thought I was out for the count, but now look at me. I'm smiling again. I got, I got joy again. I got strength again, all because of the great God of heaven. Amen. Everybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. I know you're ready to go and holler for Cincinnati or whoever you may be rooting for on today. But if you would, just indulge me and holler for Jesus for the next hour or so, however long the Lord decide to be here with us today. Amen. And we're going to give God his praise here on today. Joshua chapter 5 is where we will be on this morning. Joshua chapter 5, verses 12 through 15, and then we'll read chapter 6. And verse number one, first two words of chapter six and verse number one for our consideration on this morning. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Joshua chapter five, I want to begin reading at verse number 12. Then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld a man opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you here for us or for our adversaries? And he said, no, but as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take your sandals off your feet for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And now I want a, a, one more little phrase in Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 1. Now Jericho. Somebody say, now Jericho. now Jericho. I want to talk to some people this morning that are in between. I want to talk to some people this morning that are in between giving up and giving out. In between leaving one place 
and trying to get to another place in your life. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that knows what it's like to be stuck in between. Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 1, he says, now Jericho. And I want to talk to you all this morning. I want to give for our message for our fall. Just say it to yourself. You ain't got to talk to nobody else. Say, preacher, I thought you were going to give me to talk to my neighbor. Now, I don't want you to talk to your neighbor. I want you to encourage yourself this morning and just say, I'm in transition. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. I'm in transition. Now Jericho. He didn't start out talking about Jericho. But the now means there's some timing connected here. And after you've been through what you just heard in the previous chapter, now Jericho. Now it's time to move and cross over into the promised land. I want to talk to you today about what to do, church, when you find yourself in transition. And I really feel like as I try to get my best every week to the heart of God for this congregation as well as for those of you that are watching us online and those of you that are watching us on YouTube and other places, and I believe that there are possibly hundreds, even thousands of people that are going to hear what I'm saying today, and there are many of you that will hear this that find yourself in a transitional place. And you've got to understand that when you are in a transitional place, it means that God is going to move you from where you are and into where he has for you. But in that transitional place, church, it can become a very frustrating thing. Because when you're at the same level for a long time, and I believe that as people, we weren't built to be in the same place for a long extended period of time. And I believe that something in us yearns for more, yearns to know more about God, yearns to grow closer to God, yearns to have more knowledge about God and what his will is from to our life. And something in us, church, yearns to go, as the Bible says, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And the word of the Lord comes, if you read in this chapter, it comes to Joshua. And he said, you and this people will cross over this Jordan to the land that I'm going to show you. There's a place of crossing over, a separation from the wilderness, a separation from the dry spell, a separation from the struggle of just getting by, just having enough, just going through the same wilderness experience. That's not God's best church, and that's not God's plan for your life. The wilderness has a purpose. Tell somebody my wilderness has a purpose. To teach you how to trust in God. But he has a place of crossing over for your life. And notice that it took a Joshua. It took a power relationship. Now understand, church, you're going to have to have some relationships if you expect to cross over. Israel could not get to their promised land without a relationship with Joshua. Joshua is a beautiful type and picture of Jesus Christ. And there's no way that you are going to get into what God has for you without you going through Jesus. Didn't he say, church, that no man coming to the Father except he come by who? Got to come by me. Inside of you, church, there are things that cannot be unlocked until you get around the right folk. And Joshua could not take them where Moses could not. Moses represented the law. And the reason that God didn't let him take them to the promised land, you know, we've often said and we've heard people say because he struck the rock. And I understand that that was part of it. But really, he made it to the promised land because he ended up talking to Jesus while he was up there on the mountain of transfiguration. But the reason he didn't let Moses lead them into the promised land is because he wanted them to understand the law could not get them there. It's going to require Joshua, Jesus, to take them to the promises. You can't earn it, church. 
You can't deserve it. It only comes through Jesus Christ, through his blood, through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, through his name, you enter into the promise. Somebody say amen. And so church, it matters whether or not you got the right relationships in your life. First of all, with Jesus. But then with the leadership that God has put into your life. If they had not connected with Joshua, they would have never got into the promised land. That's a difference, church. And I want you to understand this. Between people that show up at church and people that actually join on to the vision of the church. I'll say that again. There's a difference between people that just show up to church and people that actually join on with the vision of the house. Join in with powerful people. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be connected to somebody that can get a prayer through to God. I want to be connected to somebody that got a relationship with God. So even if I find myself in a dry spell and I ain't got the words to say and I don't know how to get it together, I can call somebody and say, hey, I'm going through. And they know how to get a prayer through to God. Join in with people. And if you have a dream, don't hang around with folks that ain't got no dreams. Hang around people that also got dreams. And God got a way, church, God got a way of using the folk that are around you to spark something on the inside of you that will cause you to come out of mediocrity and to walk in the promises that God has for you. The scripture said that God began to magnify Joseph, Joshua, in the eyes of the people. Now listen to me carefully. When, when a move of God happened here, and when a move of God is happening in your life, there's two things that you can do. You can either ignore it, or you can get a hold of it. Tell somebody, you can ignore it, or you can get a hold of it. But notice that when God is taking you somewhere and transitioning you, you'll see this in the Old Testament, God constantly, three times, changed the diet of the people. The children of Israel had three specific diets in the Old Testament. In Egypt, it says over and over and over again, they ate leeks, garlic, and onions. I'm going to call that the food of bondage, you know, because ain't, no, ain't none of us trying to walk around eating leeks and garlic and onions. They ain't trying to have no conversation with, thank God we got masks, because ain't nobody trying to walk around eating leeks and garlic and onions and all. But church, I'm calling this the food of bondage because when you're in bondage, you eat certain things that everybody around you can tell what you've been eating. It's hard to tell what some people have been eating because their attitude stinks. What comes out of your mouth stinks. And we can tell what you've been consuming in your diet. If you are consuming offense, if you are consuming bitterness, if you are consuming depression, it'll always come out in a stinking attitude. And fear consuming worry and all these things. In other words, in words that come out of your mouth, church, and if you're ever going to get out of bondage, you've got to start eating something that you ain't never ate before. The Bible puts it this way. Be not conformed to this world, but be you what? By the renewing of your mind. Instead of taking in a diet of things that will give you a stinking attitude, you ought to begin to take in the word of the Lord. You ought to begin to listen to the word of the Lord. You ought to begin to feed yourself the word of the Lord. You ought to begin to listen to what the man of God has to say to you concerning the word of God. And even in your own private time, you ought to be searching the word of God because I got a place that I'm trying to be in God and I'm not going to let anything that's a attached to me. Keep me from getting to where it is that God has called me to go. God has not put me here to be affected by the world, but God has put me here so that I can affect the world and those that are around me. And the scripture said he changed their diet. And then 
they get into the wilderness and they had a second diet. Guess what it was? Manna. So it's a little bit better than leeks and garlic and onions. And the word manna, write this down, in Hebrew literally means what is it? What is it? What is it? For 40 years, they ate, listen church, the bread of uncertainty. What is it? It's the bread that sustains you while you're wandering through the wilderness. And you don't understand where you're going or where you're at. And you're just kind of holding on. And God is teaching you things. And when you first became a child of God, church, God will take you off of the stinking attitude stuff. And he'll say, you know what? You need to come out of that stuff. And he'll put you in the church. And, and at first, it's exciting. But then you may go through a little wilderness time. But that wilderness church is just to equip you with something called manna. You don't know quite what you got into, but the church is a, what is it to you? I heard I'm supposed to get baptized. What is it? What is baptism? What is the Holy Ghost? What is the baptism of the Spirit? And it's all a big, what is it? But that's okay, church. God has you right where he wants you. And then there came the place of the crossover. And that's where I read where the scripture said, and the manna ceased. And they ate of the fruit of the ground. The third diet, final diet that he puts his people on. Now their diet had to change again. And he said, now you can have whatever you're willing to break the ground for. You got to become a groundbreaker. And whatever you're willing to sow for, that's what you can eat. Whatever you want to eat, you decide. Whatever you want to get out of your walk with God, now that you are a child of God and you know what the word of God says, now it's up to you, church. Now, the man is going to cease. And when you get out of your Christian walk, it's not up to God. Whatever you sow, you will reap. A demand now is placed on your faith. Now listen, church. Your comfort level for you is a place of transition. Your comfort level must change at some point in your life. That's why he changed their diet, church. Because it's uncomfortable. Who wants to give up steak and potato for onions and leeks and garlic? A demand is put on their faith, church. It's uncomfortable. Your fruitlessness, church, is linked to your discomfort zone. That's why he said, they that sow in tears, it's uncomfortable, will reap in joy. That's why there's a verse that said, church, that he will not plow by reason of the heat. It's uncomfortable. We'll have no harvest in the winter. That's why he says that, church, because it's uncomfortable. Your fruitlessness, church, again, is linked to your discomfort zone. Your fruitlessness, your fruitlessness is being tied to your discomfort. And that's our problem in our religious walk with God. Because when you became a child of God, I know people told you that now that you were in the church, it's all good in the hood. You ain't got nothing else to worry about. Everything is going to be laid out the way that you want it to be laid out. You're not going to have to make any changes in your life. You can still do everything that you want to do and Jesus is going to bless you and Jesus is going to save you. But some of y'all that have been in the body of Christ for more than two days understand that preacher if you desire to go to a different place with God there are certain things in your life that God got to change before you he can take you to where he wants you to be and oftentimes those things that God wants to take away from you are going to cause some discomfort they are going to cause some hurt but yet and still you got to pray and you got to say God if there be anything in me that's not like thee Lord I want you to take it away Lord if it hurts me I want you to take it away. If I got to cry, Lord, I want you to take it away. If it bruises me, Lord, I want you to take it away. And then some of us, just like Paul, been coming to God, Lord, remove the thorn, remove the thorn, remove the thorn. But God said, no, but my grace is sufficient for you. How many of y'all depending on God's grace this morning? 
Your fruitlessness, church, is linked to your discomfort zone. Any woman that's given birth, I experienced this firsthand. The first sign that she is entering fruitlessness is discomfort. When a woman's going to have a baby, the first thing they feel is discomfort. And get into the hospital. And she's got one thing on her mind that y'all got me some epidural. Y'all got me something that, that I can take. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. But because I don't like this feeling that I have. I want you to take it away. And I want y'all to understand because some of us have come into a, 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 a misunderstanding that the Christian walk, God is just supposed to wrap you up in cotton. And even though you fall, you're not going to get hurt. But y'all understand that there are going to be some things that are going to come in your life that are not always going to feel good. You are not always going to understand what God is doing in your life at times you're going to ask the question. Any of y'all ever had to ask, Lord, what in the world are you doing? Lord, why in the world have you brought me out here? Lord, why in the world have you brought me into this situation? But I got good news for you this morning that just like God brought you out into the wilderness, God ain't going to leave you out here in the wilderness by yourself, but God is going to lead you to the promised land and what he has planned for your life. Now notice what happened. Joshua then sees the angel of the Lord, and he asks him a question. He's standing there with a sword in his hand, the angel is, and he said, have you come for us or for our adversaries? And I love this angel. He's a bad angel. He said, neither. If you want God on your side, you better get on God's side. Tell your neighbor, if you want God on your side, you better get on his side. Because he's not on your side and he's not on their side. He is on his side. And if you want him, you better get on the Lord's side. People take the word of God and act like God is on their side. God's word ain't for nobody's side. God's word is what it is, and either you get in line with it or you ignore it. I like this angel because the angel said, it don't matter to me. I've come to do the will of God. I whip you. I whip them. I whip all of y'all. I don't care. I'm on assignment of the will of God has to be done. It's not about people. It's about the will of God and God's glory. And you can't just grab the word and act like you're ready to fight everybody else with the word. God has his own agenda, church, and we got to get with the agenda of God. Stop using the word of God just to promote your purposes and your ideas and what you think and what you want. And you want to exclude what you want to exclude and hold on to what you want to hold on to. But even when the word of God come into your house, sit at your table, open your refrigerator, open your stove, you ought to say, ouch, and get Give God glory. Now notice this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some teaching right now. Is that okay? Is that okay? That's okay. Joshua surrenders leadership to the angel of the Lord. Joshua was captain of the people. But the angel of the Lord was the captain of the host of the Lord. You see, everybody is not a leader. Everybody has the potential to be a leader. But everybody is not a leader. If you don't believe everybody's not a leader, put them over something. Matter of fact, let's put them over your stuff and see how it go. Leadership identifies two things. Leadership is not titles. Leadership is not position. Leadership is not what you call yourself. I'm a le leadership has to do with two things. Number one, results. Don't tell me you're the best mechanic in town if I just had you work on my car and I'm calling a tow truck to come and pick it up. 
don't care how big your yellow page ad is. I don't care how big the billboard sign is. If you don't get results, you're not a leader. It's about results. And the world knows this. The world will hire people. And if they don't get results, they say they take your little title and we thank you for your service. Go on about your way. Goodbye. Secondly, leadership is about fruitfulness. Leaders have the ability to produce fruit. The biblical example of that is Moses. The Bible said that he was ready to find the first high priest for the nation of Israel. And so God told him what to do. He said, I'll tell you how to vindicate and know who I choose as a leader. He said, tell him to take a dead stick. Cut a stick down. And each tribe is to write their name of their leader on the stick. And bring a stick representing the tribe of the leader of that tribe. Twelve of them. Bring it into the holy place and put it on the Ark of the Covenant and leave it there. And the stick that was dead and comes back to life is the one that I have chosen. The way that you will know that I have chosen the stick is that the thing that was dead will begin to produce fruit. And that is the one that you are going to follow. This is the one that you that is going to go with your sin. This is the one that you are going to go with to get your blessing. And the Bible said they all brought dead sticks. All 12 of their tribes. And there was one that Aaron had. And he laid it down. They came back. All the sticks were dead. But that one stick came alive and it was burning, y'all, and it was fruitful. It was Aaron's rod and the scripture said, and God said, the one that's fruitful, that's the leader that you ought to follow. That's the leader that you ought to follow. That's what God said. He did the same thing when he wanted somebody to lead the world to salvation. Every religion said, our founder is the right one. Islam said that Muhammad is the right one. Buddhism said that Buddha is the right one. Confucius is the one. All religions say they know the one, but I know the real one on this morning. Jesus, son of David, lamb of God. Our leader is the one. But God said, fine, let's kill them all. And Jesus would be the last one standing. Jesus claims to be the one. Let's kill all of them. Kill all of them. Lay them in their tombs. And the one that's dead like a stick. And comes back to life. Y'all going to catch it after a while. The one that comes back to life and is fruitful. He is the first fruits of them that are asleep. Well, I got news for y'all. Muhammad still laying there dead like a stick. Buddha still laying there dead like a stick. That's a wider stick, but he laying there like a stick. But on the third day, he that was dead came alive, and he is not alive forevermore. He went down into the heart of the earth, stayed dead, got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. But got up with all power in his hand. Somebody say his name. Jesus. What's his name? Y'all going to make me preach in here this morning. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But what really got me about this story this morning, church, is the scripture said, when the angel said, who's on the Lord's side? Joshua said, I'm with you. And then I love this part. Joshua fell on his face and worshiped. He fell on his face. He's at a period of transition that he has longed to be and that his people have longed to be now for 40 years. He's there. But I love the fact that before you get to Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 1, where it says, 
now Jericho. Right before it, a man is in a place of transition. And he's not crying. He's not throwing a pity party for himself. But he falls down on the ground. And he worships God. And the angel said, take off your shoes. The message Bible said, take off your shoes and stay a while. In other words, I know you're busy. I know you got stuff pushing you. I know the people are anxious. I know they're all packed up and ready to go. They've been waiting generations to get access to this river. I know a lot is going on. I know you are a busy leader. But fall down on your face. Take off your shoes. Stay a while and worship God. Because when you worship church, it sets you up transition. Leaders ought to be worshipers. You've got time to worship no matter what's pushing on you. Worship church is not wasting time. God says, I want people who claim to be my leaders to spend time with me. Worship me. Take your shoes off. Stay a while. Another thing about taking your shoes off is have you ever walked around barefoot? I know I did a lot when I was younger. Stepped on nails, pulled them right out. Stepped on sticker brows, pulled them right out. Praise God. Some of y'all don't know about that good country living, walking around on you. Take it right on out and keep on walking. Walking around barefoot. You feel everything. Your feet are sensitive. So take your shoes off while I'm talking to you. I'm going to need you to be sensitive, not to what you are going through, but to my voice. Be sensitive to what it is that I am saying. So take off your shoes while I'm talking to you. I'm going to really need you to be in tune and leaning on me. And when I'm talking to you, you've never been here before, and I'm going to need to be worshipped if you're going to get through what you got to go through. I need you to be in a spirit of dependency, leaning on me, worshipping me, Looking to me to, as your source and not man. And I want to conclude with this point. Your Bible says, now Jericho was straightly shut up. Walls of resistance. They heard they were coming. Have you ever seen in the movies, you know, um, you know when, 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 when they had the cities and, and when they heard that the enemy was coming, you know, when you see uh, uh, movies like the 300, you know, and stuff like that. And you see movies, when they hear the enemy is coming, they pull their drawbridge in so can't nobody get over it. And, 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 and watch this, the walls of resistance. The Lord has somebody on the inside where they were trying to get to. God has somebody for Joshua that was there where he was trying to get to already. And here's the thing that the, I want to tell you all this morning. There's somebody that's going to help you to get in to your promised land. And here's the catch. It's a Rahab and she was a prostitute. If you think he's only going to use your people and your kind of folk and everything that's like you and acts like you and agrees with everything, that's not how God is going to take you into the promised land. He'll use folk that you never thought was able to be you. He'll bless folk that you never thought were able to be blessed. God will take those feet out of the miry clay. Set their feet on a rock to stand and establish their goings. And if you're sensitive, if you can hear him, if you'll worship him, if you'll humble yourself enough to say, I, but God said, you know what? I, I know all of what you got going on. I know the ins and outs, the workings of your life. I know all of that. Come into the house. Y'all remember Rahab? She was the one that helped them to get into the promised land. The prostitute. The one that they was trying to go through the back door because they didn't want nobody to see them going through the... Some of us said, let me a rope out the one that I'll crawl up. I want. The very one. I wonder how many of us have missed out on blessings and missed out on being able to transition because we're looking at people a certain way 
that that's why you ought to be careful how you talk to people because you might be entertaining angels unaware they may be the very one that got to give you a hand out got to flip you over so you don't get bad sore got to put food in your mouth because you're not able to feed yourself might be able to lend out a helping hand that's why you ought to learn church today how to love somebody how to treat somebody how to encourage somebody how to lift somebody up how to pick somebody up when they're down stop talking about folk stop kicking folk while they're down pouring water over a drowning man but reach down and help somebody out of their condition and if you find yourself this morning I know you're frustrated I know you get tired of walking around in circles. I know you get tired of 10 steps forward, 30 steps back. I know you get tired. Any of y'all ever been sick and tired of just being? Where you say, you know what? I ain't even got nothing else to give. I done cried every tear I can cry. My tear dust just is bone dry. I done cried every tear I can cry. I done told everybody I wanted to tell, and, 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 and I didn't want them to tell Sue, but now Sue know about it. And, and now she done told Johnny and Karen, you know they don't like me. And you know now they on the job, and they telling people about what I got going on and what I'm going through. And then when I come to the house of God, I'm going through so much, and I got so much guilt, and my conscience is weighing so heavy down on me that I think that everybody's looking at me strange because of what I'm going through. And I feel like people don't care about what it is that I'm going through. But church, you are going to have to get to a place in your life where you you're going to have to be like David and you're going to have to learn that in those times when you find that you ain't got the strength that you need, you're going to have to reach down on the inside of yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. Everybody want a cheerleader. Be your own cheerleader. Everybody wants somebody to build them up and to lift them up. Lift yourself up from time to time. Because you got to understand, church. You can't tell everybody you in transition. Some folk got draw bridges that they can pull up. Uh, somebody got moats that they done dug around and you don't even see them. They got them covered up, trap doors set up for Y'all know what it's like. You excited about something that's going on in your life and the very people you thought was going to be excited for you and happy for you, you come telling them, about, oh, well, that's all right. Oh, I, th I guess that's cool. Uh, all right, good for you. Not knowing on the inside they mad because I wanted that, but I ain't got it yet. I wanted to be there. I ain't got there yet. Well, if you'll learn to stop being a hater and learn how to Praise God when he's doing something in somebody else's life. Maybe he'll do something for you. Transitional places. Some of y'all can say, preacher, I know what transition is like because where I am right now is not where I was five years ago. See, ten years ago, I would have put out a box cutter. You said something wrong. <laughs> What's going on, you know? But see, now I'm in a place, I don't have it on me, I leave it in the car. So I got time to walk off. And you got time to get in your car before I get... Amen. Y'all better be real ashamed of the devil. Somebody say, I wish you would. I'm here, I'm ready. Because... Just because I'm in a place of transition and I'm trying to get to the promised land don't mean I left everything on the other side of the... <laughs> Glory to God. Even for those of you this morning that find yourself in a place of transition. Because here's the thing. They've just gone through an experience. Soon as they come through that experience, they didn't even get a chance to breathe. Now Jericho. It's like we wasted every amount of energy that we had to get to the top of the mountain. And we thought that we'd be able to rest for a little while, sit a little while, 
regain our energy and our strength, not knowing that as soon as we get to the top, now we got to make our trek on down to the bottom. Just lost a loved one. Here goes somebody else in the family that's sick. Somebody else, I got to go to the hospital and see him. Struggling. Any of y'all know what it's like to struggle? Struggling financially, mentally, and emotionally. And people don't realize that the physical things sometimes really don't outweigh the mental things that you are going through. And people can so easily look at you and say, oh, but they got it all together. Look, they got a new suit on. They got a new dress on. God must have blessed them. And you don't know they racking in their mind. They got decisions that they got to make. They don't know which way they are supposed to go. Some of us walking around with a flashlight in the daytime trying to figure out where we're going. But God said, don't come to the brink of the promised land. Don't allow me to do all of this that I did for you out there in the wilderness. And I'm bringing you to the land that I swore to you. Don't let me do all of that. And then you get to the promised land and looking back. Talking about what you had. Where I was. What, what I used to do. What I was involved in. See, see, that, that's what I love about being in Christ. See, I know people may have a file cabinet somewhere and got a list of things that you've done and they can pull out the date and the time and the second of when you did wrong. But that's what I love about God because he said that if any man, I'm talking about man, woman, boy, and girl, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Some of us need a new beginning this morning. We find ourselves in transitional places. And some of those places, if we, be, if we be honest about it, we don't understand. You're just walking through, I guess I'll understand it better. Singing, I'm Lord, I guess I'll. Oh, when the morning comes, you know all the God are gathering, and we're gonna. Lord, how and we will understand it better by and by. We have to sing that to ourselves to keep ourselves together. To keep me from doing something that I don't want to do. To keep me from making a decision that I'm going to regret down the road. I have to think about that. If we be honest with ourselves, the transition ain't the easiest place to go through. It's easy for people to say, weeping may endure for a night. Joy going to come in the morning. And we know the word of God is true. It's easy to say, the Lord said he never leave you. And he never forsake you. And even though you know that's true, it's a difference in saying that and not going through anything. But it's a whole different thing when your heart is hurting, when you got aches on the inside, when your mind is wandering, when you got pain, when you got depression, when you got anxieties on the inside of you. It's hard to process that kind of stuff. But God says, you know what, child of God, even though I got you in a place where you don't understand, just know that I understand and that I know everything that you're going through. Now, see, sometimes I know in life you can feel like you're wearing the storm by yourself and you're going through it by yourself just because you ain't seen but one set of footprints in the sand. It wasn't your footprints in the first place. It was God's step. God been carrying you all the way, every step of the way, and he has not brought you all the way out here just to leave you by yourself.
I'm here. But I'm trying to get over there. Lord, I'm trying. I'm struggling. There's a place in God that I desire to be. Any of y'all have a place in God that you are longing for on this morning? I'm talking about Lot. I, I, I may not ever get there, but I want to be like a lot. I want to pray, and, and Lord, the, the sun think twice before it come out. <laughs> Deacon, I want to have so much of the power of God on the inside of me that if a mosquito land on me, he'll fly away saying there's power in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> That's the relationship that I desire to have for God. If you're good where you are and you feel like you can got as far as you can go, you're in a bad place this morning. You ought to be longing for God. You ought to be desiring to have, as the song said, just a closer. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with in church. If you find yourself this morning stuck in between, maybe some of y'all are stuck in between, do I give Jesus everything that I have? Or do I continue to hold on to what I have? Do I give Jesus the opportunity to come into my life and make a difference? Or do I just continue to struggle how I've been struggling, making the same decisions that I've been making, doing everything how I've been doing, expecting different results? It's not going to happen, church. There's going to have to be a conscious decision in your life that even though I find myself in a place of transition and I may not understand it and it hurts for me to go through it and I've shed tears, I want you to understand those aren't the last tears that you're going to share. You've had worries. I want you to understand those aren't the last words that you're going to have. But even when you find yourself in those places, I know a man that holds the water in his hand. I know a man that before Abraham was, he said, I am. I know a God that solved the situation before I ever got to the situation. And that's why I know he got the answer. He got the solution. He got the solution to what it is that I'm going through. And that's why you ought to trust in God this morning. That's why you ought to surrender your life to Jesus on this morning. Today that you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. He's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. Let me come in and make a difference. Let me come in and change your life. Let me come in and change your course. The question is, are you going to open the door? Are you going to let him in? That, 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 God don't walk around with no knock warrants in his pocket. He going to give you the chance to get up out the bed and put some clothes on and get yourself together and decide whether or not you want to come to the door. He ain't barging in on none of us. But he wants you to come willingly with all of your problems. And you got them. With all of your cares, your anxieties, he wants you to bring it all. Cast it upon me because I care about you. He wants to help you this morning. Give him an opportunity to help you. Beloved, for those of you that are here, for those of you that are watching, that are stuck in between, do I give it to Jesus or do I keep it to myself? Give it to Jesus. Give it to him. He'll make a difference in your life. Come, you, if you desire this morning to develop a relationship with God, to come into the body of Christ, that, I tell you, church, you come to him this morning. Guess what? We're, we're right here at Sweetwater, we ain't got no baptism Sunday. If you want to come on to Monday, guess what? We'll put you in on Monday. You, you want to come on, what, what Mary J said, uh, my, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whoever said it. But, you know, you know whatever day you want to come. Now, Mary J said, Monday, a friend. You know, she said something different, but, you know, whatever. Tuesday, you went up. Things weren't the, y'all, y'all. <laughs> Glory to God. You know. See, sometimes you got to sing a little love song to God. Some of y'all have been so far away to God, you ought to come back. I was a fool to ever leave your side. <laughs> Me minus you is such a lonely ride. That breakup we had has made me lonesome and sad. I realize I love you and I want you back. Hey, hey. Some of
some of y'all got to come back to God. No matter what I do, all I think about is. Y'all don't understand. The love that God has for you is incomparable. He loves you, beloved, my brother, my sister, so much that he was willing to lay down his very life for you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man will lay down his life. Not for a stranger, but guess what he called you? Friend. Friend. For those of you that desire that relationship with him, come sing in your own love song. Hear the word of God. Believe what you've heard. Repent of your sins. Confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. The Lord himself will add you to his body. For those of you that are here on today and you say, Preacher, I'm stuck in between. I don't know what way I'm going. I got decisions that I got to make coming up. I need prayer. I need direction. My children are giving me a hard time. And to keep me from doing five to ten, I need you, Lord. I need you to come see about me. Before you have to put something on my book, Lord, come see about me. That was the Supremes. Come see about me. Yeah. For those of you that are here this morning, if you desire a relationship with God, you have that opportunity to do that. For those of you that are here that stand in need of prayer, why are you going to leave here and know you need to be prayed for? The, I can't tell you, the altar of God ought to be full every Sunday morning. It ought to be full every Sunday morning. Because I know you got some stuff weighing you down. I know you got some things that you're struggling with, and you may think you're able to get rid of it by yourself, but I know a man that's standing here this morning, and he wants to help you receive the help that comes from God. You can come now, my brother and my sister, as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Girl,